Hello and welcome back to another video. If you like beige old computer towers getting restored, this might be the video for you. Yes, today we're going to be restoring and cleaning up an old Pentium 4 computer tower. And this is made possible thanks to Electronic Recycling Australia who kindly donated this machine. They're one of the leading e-waste recyclers here in South Australia and they help assist and provide people with disabilities ongoing employment. So let's get started and clean up that computer. This is a rather yellowed Pentium 4 computer running Windows XP. I did power it up a few weeks ago when I got it, but I'm racing against the clock to get the yellow plastic out in the sun as the next few days are forecast to be pretty cloudy. The yellowing of the plastic on the front can actually be whitened using some 40 vol salon grade hydrogen peroxide. Although since it's winter here in Australia, sunlight can be kind of hard to get in large amounts, but we'll give it our best shot. Three one litre bottles cost me about $25. What I'll be doing is removing the front plastic panel, which is held in place by several clips. It's pretty apparent that a lot of dust had made its way in here over the last few years. So much that it looks as if there's a piece of foam insulation in here. And before I hose it down, I made sure to remove the front USB 2.0 ports. Then I sprayed off the dust from the yellow plastic. My guess is this saw a lot of UV light in an office or from a fluorescent lamp. I asked some advice from the tech YouTuber Action Retro, who said to add one part 40 volt hydrogen peroxide to three parts water. I then stirred the mixture, making sure to mix it up thoroughly. With the hydrogen peroxide at a dilution of about 4%, all that I needed now was some good sunlight, and to keep the plastic submerged in the liquid. We're just coming out of winter here in Australia, and the sun doesn't get too high in the sky, and I think I started too late in the day, honestly. The next day, which turned out to be very sunny, I tried something different. Since this was a cream, I applied the 12% hydrogen peroxide straight onto the plastic with a brush. I then put cling wrap on top to stop it drying out in the hot sun. We'll come back to that later in the video to see how white it becomes. The label at the rear says this was assembled by Protech Australia. I can't really find anything about them since the name is pretty generic. It was likely repurposed by the CRS and put into a public school or government department. The CRS stands for Computer Recycling Scheme, and if you're my age, you've probably seen a few of these in public schools growing up. Now let's give it a good cleaning with the help of some eucalyptus oil. It looks like this machine sat on its side for a long time for this dust to build up, but on the inside, it's definitely just as bad. The airflow through this machine isn't exactly good. You've got the exhaust fan at the back and no air intake fans anywhere. This causes dust and air to be sucked in through any gap due to negative air pressure. And as a result, there's a lot built up inside. The exhaust fan has also got a bit of rust forming on the metal. We'll clean that up later in the video. Now we can see how the plastic turned out. And after giving it a rinse off, it looks really good. A whole lot wider and overall very clean. According to the writing on top, this is the 105th unit with a 2.4 GHz Pentium 4 processor. This permanent marker came off pretty easily with the help of some eucalyptus oil. This machine also features an LG CD rewritable drive. I might have to retro bright this as well, depending on how it matches up with the front plastic. And underneath, there was also no shortage of dust. The hard drive and floppy drive sit in this caddy, which is held in place by two screws. It looks like a nice carpet is also formed. It's hard to believe so much can build up inside a computer, and it's always so satisfying to remove all the dust. And to get in further, I began removing all the IDE cables and connectors attached to the motherboard. I made sure to note where they all plugged into, and the motherboard itself has an AGP graphics card slot. So I'll see if I've got a suitable card laying around somewhere to put in. And with a bit of wiggling, the board is out. And if that dust underneath thought it could get away, it was wrong. And behind the exhaust fan, there was even more. I'll give that metal a good cleaning as well. Flipping the case over, I gave the rubber feet a wipe down with some Ajax spray and wipe which works very well to remove the gunk. The exhaust fan required a good brushing as the dust has really caked on over the years, but in the end it looks a whole lot better. I also opened up the power supply and dusted it out. I made sure to be very careful not to touch any of the exposed circuitry inside. The fan was also equally caked in dust. The board has two RAM slots and I'll be putting in higher capacity sticks and a new BIOS battery if the one in here is already dead. And after releasing the CPU heatsink, I wasn't expecting the processor to come out with it. And whoever installed the CPU must have bent one of the pins. This can only happen this way while seating the processor. And I was able to detach the processor, which had become stuck to the cooler because of the old thermal compound. I used some isopropyl alcohol to clean off the surface, and this took quite a bit of effort as the old compound didn't want to come off. The CPU fan also got a good clean out. 
My next challenge was straightening up the CPU pin that had completely bent back on itself. Somehow the CPU was still working like this, and perhaps this pin isn't important. Either way, I did manage to straighten it out and get it in line once again. It fits in nicely with all the pins back as they should be. And once again, I used some isopropyl lacquer hole to remove the old thermal compound. I put the new thermal compound down in an X shape, then spread it out over most of the die's surface. After cleaning off the corroded surfaces, I went over them with a silver paint pen. And if I had some more time, I would have sanded back these areas, applied some rust converter, then painted over it. But this will do since the corrosion is very minor, and the front of the optical drive was pretty dirty. And using some spray and wipe, got the grime off nicely. And now the freshly whitened front can go back on, and I'm very pleased with how it turned out. But now that the casing is whitened, the optical drive looks quite yellow. But before it was the complete opposite, so I'll have to whiten the drive as well. Luckily, it was very sunny, so I brushed some 12% hydrogen peroxide cream and let it sit for a few hours. Before fully reassembling it, I tried firing it up. And yes, it still works, thankfully. As I do with all these machines I receive from Electronic Recycling Australia, I make sure to wipe the hard drives. I'll be once again installing Windows XP Pro, and the optical drive is now back to what I'd imagine is its original shade of white. As well as doubling the RAM, I'm going to put in this NVIDIA GeForce 7600 GT graphics card. It features passive cooling and 512 megabytes of video memory, released sometime in 2006. And after loading in all the drivers, the system is ready to be used. This will make for a great little retro gaming PC. I upgraded the RAM to 1GB, which is adequate for this system. I tried to do a little bit of cable management, but there's only so much you can do inside one of these cases. So let's set up this freshly cleaned out old system and have some fun. And here's our little computer setup. I've paired the system with some old school Philips speakers, which honestly sound pretty good. I must say, I really dig the aesthetics of this case as well. And we can't have a Windows XP video without hearing that also nostalgic boot chime. Starting off strong, we've got one of my favourite games, Old School RuneScape. Slaying cows in the Lumbridge Fields is a rite of passage in this game, and a decent moneymaker if you're a new player. It runs very well on this system. The original Star Wars Battlefront game also runs very well on here. This is a game that definitely benefits from the good graphics card I put in here. Taking things back to the 90s, I tried playing some Monster Truck Madness too. If you like old school games like this, a computer like mine would be ideal. Another 90s game I love to test is Age of Empires 2. It runs perfectly on here, and I ended up spending way too much time playing this during filming. Another 3D game I thought I would test is Sonic Heroes. It honestly runs great, and it's a very fun game. With a modern browser such as Arctic Fox, most websites will load, but YouTube videos fail to play. I had a lot of fun cleaning out this computer, and it's something that I hope to have in my collection for many more years to come. It is hard finding old beige systems like this, as most people will just throw them away, but this one now has a lot more life left in it. So there we have an unassuming beige tower returned to its former glory. Although let's be real, this thing never really had any glory. Anyway, also big thanks to Electronic Recycling Australia for providing this unit for me to make a video on. They actually also sell affordable refurbished computers on their website, so you should definitely go check that out, and it's listed in the description below. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you've liked the video, feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.